welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and these are my favorite combos in Commander. I actually used to have this video up on my channel a long, long time ago. It was one of my very first videos. I did it about a year ago, and it was really not great quality, and I kind of screwed up a little bit. So I took it down, and I was going to redo it, and then I sort of forgot about it. Got busy doing lots of other things, and then recently I was like, oh yeah, I probably should do that video again. So I'm doing it now, and and I will just say about combos, you know, for me, combos are two cards that sort of work really well together. They synergize really well, right? I'm not talking about infinite combos here. Instant win, game winning combos, any of that stuff, just really neat synergies between two cards that give you a nice advantage in a commander game. You know, traditionally in the history of the game, infinite combos were considered a mistake, right? The, I put two cards in play and just win the game. That just didn't happen. Those cards always got banned right away. But then it got to the point where there were so many cards out there that I guess Wizards of the Coast just gave up on that idea that there was no way they were going to be able to ban enough cards to lock out all of those infinite combos. So they just said to heck with it. It's now part of the game. I'm still a little old school. I don't love using infinite combos. I never put them in my decks. I suppose it's even an open discussion about whether or not an infinite combo is a casual theme or not, right? Is infinite combos okay in a casual commander game? You know, some people would say no, some people would say yes. I've definitely seen both opinions all over the place. But nevertheless, all of the combos that I'm naming today are most certainly casual combos that nobody, not that I've seen, has ever had an issue with in a commander game and probably never should. I wouldn't call them super janky, but they definitely are a little on the janky side. So I'll start out with one that's fairly simple, and that is Ophiomancer and Conspiracy, right? So Ophiomancer, two and a black human shaman, two, two. At the beginning of each upkeep, if you control no snakes, create a one, one black snake creature token with death touch. Of course, a great card in a commander game all around. With a conspiracy in play, right? Three black, black enchantment. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you control are the chosen type. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. So why this works so good with Ophiomancer is because it changes all of your creature types to that type and not anything else. This does not work with a lot of other cards that change creature types because usually it changes creature types in addition. And what you want with Ophiomancer is you want to not control any snakes at all, right? So at the beginning of each upkeep, Ophiomancer will check if you have any snakes in play and it'll make one. Then on the next player's upkeep, you have a 1-1 black snake token in play, so it's not going to give you one. But with Conspiracy, all your creatures are now whatever you want, right? You can pick anything as long as it's not snake, and that's why I like this combo so much. I had this in my Nadir and Miara deck because... Miara wants my elves to die and then I draw cards. So what I do is I cast Conspiracy and then change all my creatures into elves so that whenever any creature of mine dies, I can draw a card off of it. Works great there. And also, they're not dead cards, right? Neither of those cards are dead cards in that deck. And then if I get them both out, now my Ophiomancer snake tokens are elves when they enter the battlefield and they're not snakes. So on the next upkeep, it'll check to see if I have any snakes. I do not. I only have elves and it'll make another snake. So what happens here is at the beginning of every player's upkeep, this is going to spit out a snake token with death touch. Of course, it's not going to be a snake, but you're going to keep getting those tokens every single upkeep. Again, it's not blowing anyone away with this combo. Just really, really great value. Works really nicely and fits really nicely into any strategy, a tribal strategy. Again, if you're in a black theme where you maybe want your creatures to all be a certain type, it'll work really great there. Next up, we got Unnatural Selection and and spirit mirror so unnatural selection is one in a blue enchantment and you can pay one to choose a creature type other than a wall target creature becomes that type until end of turn so it's just the enchantment that can repeatedly chain creature types there's a lot of ways to use this card no question my favorite combo with this is spirit mirror two white white enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep if there are no reflection tokens on the battlefield create a two two white reflection creature token and you can pay zero to destroy target reflection so Again, just like with the Conspiracy, and I guess Conspiracy does work here as well because you can change your creature types into something other than Reflections, right? Just like with the Ophiomancer, it works the same way where at the beginning of your upkeep, you'll just keep getting these Reflection Tokens because you don't have any Reflection Tokens. More so, the combo here is that zero mana ability to destroy target Reflection. So what happens is you're going to use this on your opponents, right? For one mana, you change your opponent's creature type into a Reflection and then you pay zero mana 
to destroy target reflection. So this just becomes one mana, destroy a creature of your opponent's. So for every creature on the battlefield, you just pay one mana to destroy it. Pretty great combo. And of course, there are a few other ways you can do this as well. This is probably the easiest way. It also works with pure reflection, which interestingly enough, also creates reflections. This card actually works with both because it's a two and a white enchantment. Whenever a player casts a creature spell, destroy all reflections, then that player creates an XX white reflection creature token where X is the mana value of that spell. So interestingly enough, this is the other card that deals with the reflection creature type. So any player will create a reflection token. And then, you know, if your opponent has that reflection token, you can just pay zero to destroy it because it's a reflection. I've mentioned both of these cards in my 10 cards videos before because they are really great for dies triggers because you're destroying these reflection tokens all the time. Those are creatures dying. So it works great in any deck where you want there's to be dies triggers all the time. Like an Alenda deck, for example, I think both of these cards are great. But getting back to the combo, obviously, Obviously, Pure Reflection will work great with Unnatural Selection again because whenever anyone casts a creature spell, the Pure Reflection trigger will go on the stack and then you can respond by turning a bunch of creatures into reflections. And then when the Pure Reflection trigger resolves, it will destroy all those creatures, right? Because they're reflections. So again, works very similar to the other combo. Also, if you want a one shot here, Standardize will work. Blue and a blue instant, choose a creature type other than a wall. Each creature becomes that type until end of turn. So now I can pay two blue mana to turn every creature into a reflection. And then when that pure reflection trigger resolves, it will destroy all the creatures on the battlefield. So it becomes sort of like a board wipe. There is a lot of different ways to use this combo. But like I said, my favorite is unnatural selection and spirit mirror because I'm just one mana destroying my opponent's creatures. And then I also get that reflection token on top of it on my upkeep. Next up is tornado and solemnity. And I got a bunch in a row here that are in my dragon Lord Dramoka deck. And you can check that out on my personal deck text video I talk about that that is my one deck that isn't really built around my commander it's just a bunch of combos that I really like that I shoehorned into a deck together because they all happen to be white and green I'm actually doing an update of my personal decks video right away so stay tuned for that a lot of people have been asking for it so solemnity obviously is an infamous card that combos with a lot of stuff my favorite is tornado four and a green enchantment has cumulative upkeep pay one green so that's not great and then has pay two and a green and pay three life for each velocity counter on tornado destroy target permanent and put a velocity counter on tornado activate only once each turn so how this card would normally work is you're going to play it and then on your upkeep you have to pay the one green and of course with cumulative upkeep you're putting the age counter on that permanent and then paying one green for each age counter on it and then you pay two and a green and three life for each velocity counter on tornado so the first time you use it it's not going to have any velocity counters on it so you're only going to pay the two and a green and destroy target permanent and obviously being able to destroy a permanent for three mana is pretty darn good and you can activate it on each player's turn if you want to right it's only once each turn but you can do it on everyone's turn now with a solemnity in play you're not going to be putting any age counters on this right we already know that solemnity works really great with cumulative upkeep because you don't put the age counters on there because enchantments can't have counters on them so you're not going to have to pay the cumulative upkeep also not going to ever have to pay the life right because you're you're destroying a permanent and then putting a velocity counter on it but again it can't have counters on it so you're never going to be doing that as well so it's helping you out in both scenarios so with solemnity in play this is just pay three mana to destroy a permanent and you can activate it on each player's turn that's pretty fantastic obviously in a commander game one of my personal favorites another combo i have in that deck that i really love is painter servant and nantuko blight cutter so obviously again painter servant is sort of an infamous card that combos with a a lot of different stuff because changing the color of every single card whether it be a permanent or a spell or something in your library is a really powerful effect nantuko blight cutter is my personal favorite two and a green insect a druid 2 2 has protection from black so obviously we're going to be choosing black as the color for our painter's servant so that means our nantuko blight cutter has protection from everything also though it has threshold and of course we need seven or more cards in our graveyard to get threshold that's not very difficult typically nantuko blight cutter gets plus one plus one for each black permanent your opponent's control if you have threshold so this is every permanent on the battlefield if our painter servant is in play right even the lands are going to be black so this is plus one plus one for each permanent our opponents all of our opponents control how many is that going to be well i've gotten this up to 
like 40, 50, it's a one shot, right? And because it has protection from black, it also can't be blocked. I don't have to give it flying or trample or anything like that. My opponents cannot target my Nantuko Blight Cutter with anything because it has protection from black, also can't block it with anything. So when I have these two cards in play, it always becomes a one shot for each opponent. And trust me, because this is so fringe and janky, no one is ever complaining when they get one shot about my Nantuko Blight Cutter. Another combo that I have in that deck that usually ends up in a one shot is Angry Mob and Urborg. Again, Urborg is another card that does combo with a lot of different things. Roots of Life is one that I have in my name as one deck, actually, that is a pretty neat combo where all my opponent's lands are swamps and I just name Swamp with my Roots of Life. So every time one of my opponents taps a land for mana, I get to gain a life. So that gets out of hand really fast. Angry Mob is the one I have in my Dragonlord Dramoka deck too. White, white, human with trample. As long as it's your turn, Angry Mob's power and toughness are equal to two plus the number of swamps your opponents control. When it's not your turn, it's power and toughness is only two. So of course, on our turn is what matters most because that's when we're going to be attacking. And if our Urborg is in play, this becomes two plus the number of lands our opponents control, which again is going to be like 20 or 30 or however many. Typically, again, it's a one shot and this guy's got trample. So blocking isn't going to help a whole lot here. I will say though, I did recently do this in a game on Spell Table with one of my patrons and I attacked with it and they actually threw a whole bunch of chump blockers in the way and ended up surviving. I think they had three life left. So it's not a for sure win, but you just get this massive creature that is trampling and you, and also it's an angry mob. I think that part of it is just really, really funny, right? You see the art and it's like a bunch of people sort of marching through the streets and the more swamps your opponents have, the angrier they get and the bigger the mob gets. So I just think the flavor here is really funny as well. I should also say I have Crusading Knight in there as well, which is slightly different. It's two white, white human knight, two, two with protection from black and it gets plus one, plus one for each swamp your opponent's control. So it's going to be just as big, has protection from black, which could be good if I have my painter servant out because I also have that combo. But typically the angry mob is better because it has that trample. But Crusading Knight does work as well with the Urborg. Another little nifty combo that I like a lot, and, and this one is not overly complicated, it's pretty simple, is Crafty Cut Purse and Rampage of the Clans. And Crafty Cut Purse, of course, is three and a blue, human pirate, two, two with flash. When it enters the battlefield, each token that would be created under an opponent's control, this turn is created under your control instead. So a lot of nifty tricks you could do here. Again, this is another card that probably combos with a lot of different stuff. Or even on its own, you could use it to steal all your opponent's plant tokens from the Revenger of Zendikar or something. Thing. I, I really like this card. It should probably see a little more play than it does. I really like it with Rampage of the Clans. Three and a green instant. Destroy all artifacts and enchantments for each permanent destroyed this way. Its controller creates a 3-3 three, three green center creature token. So again, both of these cards I think are really good cards, just on their own. If you throw these two cards in your deck, and I have both of these in my Tashana deck, and if I just draw the one, okay, I got my Rampage of the Clans. I can use it to destroy all artifacts and enchantments. My opponents get some 3-3 three, three creatures, but that's okay. I have a real creature heavy deck. It's not going to hurt that bad. Or I got my Crafty Cut Purse. Don't have my Rampage of the Clans. That's okay. I can just use it to, again, steal someone's plant tokens or whatever other tokens they might be creating. But of course, if you combine the two, it's an absolute blowout. Again, not necessarily game ending, but I actually did cast this in my Tishana deck when I was playing it the other day and got the combo off and didn't end the game right away, but probably three or four turns after that, it was game over. It's pretty hard to come back from it because, of course, you're going to cast your Crafty Cut Purse. And because it has Flash and Rampage of the Clads is an instant, you can do this at any time, right? You can do it on your opponent's end step. It is going to cost eight mana. That's a lot, but you're going to destroy all the artifacts and enchantments in play and then create that many 3-3 three, three green centaur tokens, right? You get them all. I ended up getting eight, which isn't even that good. Usually you can do a lot better than that, but eight three threes is 24 damage. So eight mana at instant speed to destroy all artifacts and enchantments and then create that many 3-3 three, three centaur tokens. Tokens, I think is pretty darn good. And lastly today, we got Hakon Stromgold Scourge. Once again, I mentioned this on my channel. I mentioned this card a ton. I actually did this in my original 10 deck ideas video where you could really build a deck around this guy because his ability is so unique and powerful. There is a lot you can do here. One black, black, zombie knight, three, three. You may cast Hakon Stromgold Scourge from your graveyard, but not from anywhere else. So that makes it really difficult as a commander, obviously, because you can't cast it from your command zone. You have to get it into your graveyard 
graveyard before you can even cast it. But as long as it is on the battlefield, you may cast night spells from your graveyard. And when Hakon dies, you lose two life. So that mill ability is the one that you really can build around, right? Being able to cast night spells from your graveyard is fantastic. I think this goes great at any night tribal deck in black in particular. Again, that Alenda deck, fantastic fit because you want your Alenda to be dying. So you can let your Alenda go to the graveyard and then rather than putting it in the command zone and having to pay that commander tax, if my Hakon's on the battlefield, Alenda is a knight so I can just cast it again from my graveyard for four mana. So I think it's a great fit in a deck like that. Can fit in a lot of knight tribal themes. But there's a lot of neat janky things you can do with it as well. For example, Nameless Inversion, one and a black tribal instant shapeshifter. So it is a tribal shapeshifter instant spell and has changeling and there are a few cards out there that aren't creatures they're actual spells that have changeling and of course this card has every creature type so no matter what zone it is in it has every creature type even though it's a spell it's not a creature it still has every creature type and target creature gets plus three minus three and loses all creature types until end of turn so if i have my hack on in play and nameless inversion i can cast it whether it be in my graveyard or in my hand i can cast it use this to either buff a creature if it's mine or i can kill my opponent's creature that's typically how you would use this because it's going to give that creature a minus three toughness and if its toughness is three or less of course it's going to die then nameless inversion goes to my graveyard but it has the knight creature type so i can continue to cast it from my graveyard over and over and over again so now if my opponent has a six toughness creature i can nameless inversion it give it plus three minus three and then do it again and get it off the table so hack on works really really good with the changeling creature type and again there are a few spells that have the changeling creature type that you can cast over and over and over again but of course you can just change all of your creatures to a certain type and ashes of the fallen is my personal favorite here that works this way these cards actually were both in standard for a while and i tried to make a deck like this with hack on and ashes of the fallen that's why i like it there are other ways you can do this of course ashes of the fallen is a two mana artifact and when it enters the battlefield you choose a creature type each card in your graveyard has the chosen type in addition to its other types so of course we're going to choose knight right we pay two mana and every creature card in our graveyard is now a knight so with hack on and play that allows us to cast any creature spell from our graveyard which can be great you can build your entire deck around this idea i think i can have a screw a tribe elder sacrifice it get a land cast it again for my graveyard use it again right just ramp as much as i want i can have an eternal witness now it's a knight when it's in my graveyard when it enters the battlefield it's no longer a knight but i don't care about that i only care that it's a knight when it's in my graveyard cast it for my graveyard to get something back you can have like a mystic snake in your graveyard right you can do all sorts of little fun things here your opponent casts a spell you cast that mystic snake from your graveyard to counter whatever they're doing really could be a fun deck idea there's a lot of different ways you can go with hack on because it is a really powerful ability again my personal favorite is ashes of the fallen with hack on two very fringe cards that work really really well together where you're just able to cast every creature in your graveyard from your graveyard but that is it that is all just some of my personal favorite combos again not infinite game winning combos necessarily just fun interesting combos that i think work great in a commander game what are your favorites let me know in the comments below but that is it for today and thanks for tuning in